In this lesson, we're going to look at the relationship between the degree of a polynomial and the turning points that the polynomial has and the number of x-intercepts that the polynomial will have. So there is a relationship among all three. So let's, let's remind ourselves about what a turning point is. So a turning point is a point on the graph where the graph changes from increasing to decreasing or from decreasing to increasing. So we are talking about, in this case, polynomial functions. So if you look at this example um, of a polynomial function, you're decreasing and then all of a sudden you're increasing. So these are turning points right here, turning points. So these are called turning points. So you're uh, uh, decreasing, increasing, so that's a turning point, which happens to be, by the way, relative min, right? That's a relative minimum or a local minimum. And then it increases and decreases. So there's a turning point. So there's another turning point. Then here's another turning point, And then here's another turning point. So this, this polynomial function, whatever the polynomial function is, it has one, two, three, four turning points. If you look at the x-intercepts, the x-intercepts are there are one, two, three, four, five x-intercepts. So this, this polynomial function has um, uh, four turning points, four turning points, and uh, five x-intercepts. Okay, and so so there is a relationship. There is a relationship with regards to the degree and the number of turning points a function can have, and the number of x-intercepts a function can have. What I want what I want to look at first is this, just to remind you, um, because you've had you had a um, a good number of experiences dealing with graphing and quadratic functions. So remember when we had a quadratic function, notice that this quadratic function the degree of a quadratic function is 2, right? So I'm going to put the word degree. The degree of a quadratic function is 2. The degree of a quadratic function is 2. Remember the degree is the largest exponent that you see. So that the degree is 2. So the degree of a quadratic function is 2. And in both cases it's 2. These are both quadratic functions. So the degree here is 2. The degree of a quadratic function of a quadratic function is 2. Now, what I want to do is look at the number of turning points. So, so in a quadratic function, so whenever you remember graphing a parabola, how many turning points were there? There was just one, right? It either decreased or increased, or it increased or decreased. So it either went up, it opened up, or it opened down. But there was only one turning point. So for every quadratic function that you graph, that was only one turning point, okay? So keep that in mind. So one turning point, one turning point. Okay, in this case as well, one turning point. All right, now look at the x-intercepts. So in this case, there were two x-intercepts, right? So this had two x-intercepts, two x-intercepts. And over here, this didn't have any because it never crossed the x-axis. So this has zero x-intercepts. All right, so for degree, for degree 2, I want you to notice, I want you to notice that the um, turning point, so when the degree is 2, the, the turning point here was 1, and the turning point here is 1. This had two x-intercepts. This had zero x-intercepts. All right, now let's look at one more. One more graph that I, before we look at at uh, the relationship. So let's look at this one. Let's look at a cubic. So notice x cubed. The degree is 3, right? The degree is 3, correct? There's a largest exponent. There are one turning point and another turning point. So there are two turning points here. Two turning points. Okay? Over here, um, the x-intercepts, there's one x-intercept. That's, that's the only place where the graph crosses the x-axis. One x-intercept. All right, now over here, for this cubic function, there's one, two. So there's two, so the degree is three. I'm going to put the, the word degree. Degree is three. Degree is three. There are two turning points. 
and one, two, three X intercepts, right? Three X intercepts. So notice in this example, there was only one X intercept. And in this example, there were three. All right. And in both cases, there were two turning points. All right. Now let's look at, at this. And I'm getting to a point here. So just bear in mind, just, just, just keep on going with me. Here, the degree is 5. The degree is 5. And this degree is 5 as well. So in both cases, the degree is 5. Okay? All right. Now, look at the number of turning points. 1, 2. So there's a turning point. There's a turning point. There's a turning point. There's a turning point for four turning points. Four turning points. Okay? Let's look at the x-intercepts. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 x-intercepts. Okay. Over here, let's look at the turning points. 1, 2. That goes for increasing, decreasing. So that's one turning point, right? So that's a turning point. We just call it TP. And then here's another turning point. Increase, decrease. I'm sorry, decrease, increase. And then it's just increasing all the way up. So, so in this case, there's only two turning points, right? Two turning points. And then the x-intercepts, there was one, two, three. Three x-intercepts. All right, now, there's a relationship between the degree, the degree, so notice the degree here is five. The number of turning points was four for this one, two for that one. The number of x-intercepts was five for this one, and three for this one. All right, so here's... Here's the relationship that, that I need for you to remember, and we'll come back and look at those graphs again. A polynomial function of degree n will have at most, at most, n minus 1 turning points. So what that means is this. If the degree is 5, if the degree is 5, the most number of turning points you can have will be 5 minus 1, which is 4. So notice I did have 4 here. And I didn't have, and I only had two here, so the number of turning points is always one less than is at most. Excuse me, at most one less than um, the degree. So the degree is five. One less than five is four. So the maximum number of turning points you can have is four. This had four. This had two. You cannot have five. You cannot have six. You cannot have seven. And so on. The maximum number of turning points is always one less. In this case, it was two. In this case, it was four. Um, for a cubic, in this case, it was two turning points. And in both cases, two turning points. But the maximum you can have is always one less. For the um, x-intercepts, the x-intercepts, sometimes we call them zeros. Now, let me remind you why sometimes we call the x-intercepts zeros. Because if you look at the x-intercept here, what's my y value? My y value is 0, right? If you look at this x-intercept here, my y value is 0. So they're called zeros because that's where the function is equal to 0. So my function is equal to 0 when x is negative 3, negative 2, 0, 2, and 3. So that's why they're called zeros. So the x-intercepts are sometimes called zeros. But the, a polynomial function of degree n will have at most x-intercepts. So the maximum number of x-intercepts you can have is the degree. So let's go back to, to um, our degree 5. So how many x-intercepts did this one have? Remember, this has degree 5, so there is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Maximum you can have is 5. Over here, it only had 3. 1, 2, 3. The degree is 5. The maximum you can have is 5. And in this case, we had 3. When, when I went to the quadratic function, the degree is 2, the maximum you can have is 2, right? X-intercepts, the maximum you can have is 2. In this case, I, in this one, I didn't have any, but the maximum you can have is 2. And then for cubic, notice for cubic, um, the maximum number of x-intercepts you can have is 3. I had 1 here, and then I actually had 3 here, okay? All right, so let's look at some examples, some examples. So, so remember this. It's important you remember this now. Uh, the maximum number of turning points you can have, remember I said maximum, the maximum number of turning points you can have is always one less than degree. 
the maximum number of x-intercepts you can have is always equal to the degree, okay, the maximum. All right, so let's look at some examples. Let's look at this one. Number one, what is the maximum number of turning points and x-intercepts the function can have? All right, so first of all, in, in order to answer the question, you need to know the degree. The degree of this polynomial, which is the largest exponent, which is 5. The degree is 5. So answer. So let's do the solution here. Solution. Since the degree is 5, since the degree is 5, the maximum number of turning points is 4. Okay? And the maximum number of x-intercepts is, remember it's always equal to the degree, is 5. All right, so since the degree is 5, the maximum number of turning points is 4, and the maximum number of x-intercepts is 5. And the next one, here's our function, h of x equals 3x cubed minus 8x to the fourth plus 2x minus 5. You need to find the degree first. So sometimes it's helpful to put this in descending order. See how this was in descending order? This one's not. So, so you may want to write this in descending order. So notice that h of x in descending order, descending order is negative 8x to the fourth plus 3x cubed plus 2x minus 5. And then you could see that the degree, the degree of the polynomial is 4. So since the degree of h of x is 4, the maximum, maximum number of turning points is uh, always one less. So it's 3. The maximum turning points you can have is 3. So you can have 3, you can have 2, or 1. Okay? So the maximum number of turning points is, is uh, 3. The maximum number of x-intercepts, the maximum number of x-intercepts is, and then since the degree is, is uh, 4, the maximum number is equal to the degree. So the, degree is, uh, so the maximum number of x-intercepts is 4. So it's, that's the maximum. So you can have 4, 3, 2, 1, or 0. You can have 0 x-intercepts. We saw that here. So remember... Remember, uh, let me go ahead and quickly find it. So remember, this doesn't have any, right? So, so you can have zero x-intercepts. Okay. Um, all right. Now, um, all right. So that, those are two examples. Let's look, let's look at some other types of examples you you need to be able to to look at or to be able to do. All right, now look at this example. Um, so listen carefully. It says a polynomial function g of x has x-intercepts. Now what that means is this. So, so it, sometimes it helps to draw this, okay? So if I draw a coordinate plane just like this, and, and it has four x-intercepts, so one, two, three, four, okay? So four x-intercepts. So in your mind, this is what you see. See something like this, 4x-intercepts. Which of the following most accurately describes the degree of this function? What is the degree? What is the degree of g of x? All right, so which of those most accurately describes the degree? So, so remember, remember we talked about the relationship about x-intercepts. So there are 4x-intercepts, right? 4x-intercepts. So remember in our discussion, let me just quickly get that page. So in our discussion with regards to x-intercepts, we said a polynomial function of degree n has at most x-intercepts, okay? Um, at most, and that should be uh, at most n, I'm sorry, n x-intercepts. So it has at most n x-intercepts. All right, so if the degree is four, then what's, what is, the relationship with regards to the degree. So if, the, if this function has four x-intercepts, what can the degree be? All right, so here are some choices and you gotta choose one of those. The degree of g of x is at most four. 
So if you're saying the degree is four, at most four, okay, so you're saying it cannot be five, it cannot be six, it cannot be seven, right? So, so, so this is saying the degree of g of x is at most four. So the maximum degree is four. Is that true? So let's think about that. So, so remember this says, this says if the degree is n, then the, then the number of x-intercepts is at most equal to the degree. So, so if, you, if, if this right here has degree has four x-intercepts, four x-intercepts, then, then can the degree be at most four? In other words, um, can it be five, for example? Yes, the degree can be five, couldn't it? The degree can be five. So let me just write this. So if the number of x-intercepts is four, here's, here's the way I would, I would think about this. If the number of x-intercepts is four, then the degree, the degree can be four, five, six, and so on, couldn't it? Y'all agree? Okay. So if the degree can be four, five, or six, does this statement apply? Can the degree be at most four? No, because I'm using five, six, or seven, so on. So, so this is out of it. The degree of g of x is at least five. Is it at least five? So meaning five, six, seven? Nope, that's not true because it can be four as well, couldn't it? So that can be it. Now make sure you understand that it says at least five. So that means that means um, you can't use four, but but if the number of x-intercepts is four, it can, the degree can be the number of x-intercepts. See, the degree of g of x is at most five. Can the degree be at most five? No, because that leaves off six, seven, eight, and so on. The degree of g of x is at most three. Obviously, that's not true because it has to be four, five, six, or seven. The degree of g of x is at least three. At least three means three, four, five. It cannot be three because if the degree is three, then you cannot have four x-intercepts. See that? So the degree cannot be three. Is at least at least three. So we cannot use three. At least three means three, four, five, or six. So at least three means including three. I cannot include three. Because if the degree is three, the maximum number of x-intercepts you can have is three. So we have to x that out. And then there's only one choice left, right? So hopefully this is it. The degree of g of x is at least four. And that's true, at least four. Four, five, six. So that's it. So the answer is, is f. Okay? All right, let's look at another one. Let's do another one with like this. All right, so in number two, it says a polynomial h of x has six x-intercepts. So you're told it has six. Which of the following must accurately describe the degree of h of x? So it has six x-intercepts, right? So meaning this, meaning it could look like this. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so six x-intercepts. All right, now remember, since it has six x-intercepts, since there are six x intercepts so remember the the um, the the number of, at the number of x intercepts must be at most equal to the degree so the degree is five the maximum number of x intercepts you can have is five if the degree is six the maximum number of x intercepts you can have is six and so on that's what this says so if since there are six x intercepts since there are six x-intercepts, then, then we can say this. So we can say the degree of h of x can be six, seven, eight, and so on. Okay? Can be six, seven, eight, and so on. So if the degree is six, the maximum number you can have is six. And there are six here. If the degree is seven, the maximum number you can have is seven. And there are six here. So, so meaning seven or less, right? So the degree is six, the maximum maximum number of x-intercepts you can have is six, so six or less. Seven, seven or less. And so if it's seven or less, you still, you have six, so that's fine. Eight or less, you still have six, that's fine, okay? But it cannot be five, right? You can't use five. The degree cannot be five. Make sure you understand that. The degree can't be five. Because if the degree is five, the maximum number you can have is five x-intercepts and you have six because because the maximum number 
would be 5. And and so the degree, it can't be 5 because the maximum number you would have, uh, you, you could have would be 5. And there are 6 of them. All right, so let's look at the choices. Let's see which one applies. Okay, so 6, you can have 6. The degree can be 6. The degree can be 7. The degree can be 8, and so on. It cannot be anything less than 6. So the degree of h of x is at most 5, meaning the degree is 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5. Is that true? No. It has to be at least, it has to be, so notice at 6, 7, or 8, do you, all, do you understand that this means at least 6, right? At least 6 or at most, um, well, that, no, we can't say at most, so at least 6. So the 6, 7, or 8 means at least 6, right? At least 6. All right. So you just find the one that says at least 6. So can it be at least 5? No, you can't say at least 5 because 5's not in here. So we can X that out, those two out. Can it be at most 6? No, at most 6 means 6 or below. It cannot be 5, it cannot be 4, it cannot be 3. Uh, the degree is at least 6. Well, there we go. It has to be this one, right? At least 6, because at least 6 means 6, 7, 8, and so on. So let's just look at the other two and see why that doesn't work. The degree of h of x is at most 7. At most 7 means 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And 2, 3, 1, 4, 5 is not in here. At least 7 means 7 or more, but that excludes 6 because it can be 6. So we can't use that one. So it's only this one. All right, so that's number 2. All right, let's look at this now. This time we're talking about turning points. So a polynomial function, f of x, has five turning points. All right, so we have five turning points. So something like this. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. So five turning points. And they want to know what is the, um, what could, what could be the degree of this polynomial. So remember our relationship so if the degree is in, the number of turning points is always one less, right? One less. So so the so if the degree is if the degree is five, then this has to be at most four, correct? If the degree is six, this has to be at most the number of turning points is at most five. If this is seven, the degree is seven, the number of the maximum number of turning points you can have would be six, and so on. Okay. So a polynomial function has five turning points. Which of the following most accurately describes the degree? So there are five turning points, okay? Five turning points. So this means, this means the degree can be six, seven, eight, nine, and so on. So notice what this means. If the degree can be 6, 7, or 8, 9, and so on, that means at least 6, right? So the degree is at least 6. That's what that means. 6, 7, 8, 9. At least 6 means 6, 7, 8, 9, and so on. That's what that means. Okay. So let's see which one says at least 6. So at least 6 is the one, uh, let's say at least 6 is this one here. Okay, make sure you understand why the other ones don't work. So the degree of f of x is at most 4. So, so that means now if the degree, if the degree is 4, then the maximum number of turning points you can have is 3, right? So that can be it because you have 5 here. So you know that can be it. Here, you're told the degree, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, the degree is at most 6. So, so at most 6 means, means that that the degree cannot be 7, and that's not true because, because the degree can be 7, the degree can be 8, the degree can be 9. And, and you know it cannot be 6 anyway. Uh, remember, at most 6 means, makes you understand, at most 6, at most 6 means, means um, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. So you know it can be it because, because it has to be at least 6. At least 5 at least 5 means 5, 6, or 7. So we cannot use 5. We cannot use 5 because there are 5 turning points. 
the, the maximum turning points always has to be one less than the degree. So it cannot be five. We cannot use this because five is in here. So, so if, we, if, if the degree is five, then the maximum number of turning points would be, would be four. And there are um, five here. So we cannot use that. The degree of f of x is at most five. At most five means one, two, three, four, five. And, and notice the degree here has to be at least six. The degree of the polynomial is at least four. At least four means four, five, six, seven, and so on. We know we can't use four or five because there are five turning points. So that only leaves us with this one. Okay, so that was number three. Let's look at another one, number four. All right, so in number four, we're given that the uh, polynomial function f of x has seven turning points, seven turning points. So uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So seven turning points. And we want to know what could be the degree of this polynomial. All right, so remember there are seven turning points, right? So let's think about that, seven turning points. So since there are seven turning points, the degree, the degree of f of x can be eight, right? Remember the the if the if there are seven turning points, um, then the degree is will be one at least one more. So eight, nine, ten, eleven, and so on. So eight, nine, ten, eleven means so this means. This means the degree is at least, so 8, 9, 10 means at least 8. So at least 8 means 8, 9, 10, which is what you see here. And all you have to do is just look to see which, which of these says at least 8. So the degree is at least 8, so that's, uh, that's this one right here. That's this one. Now, make sure you understand why it can be the others, though. So it really helps to make sure you understand that. So, so this says at most six. So at most six, remember at most six means, means uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, I'm sorry, one, two, three, four, five, six. And you know you can't have anything less than eight, right? So we can cross this out. At most seven means the same thing, one, two, three. So we know we can't have degree one, two, or three, so we can automatically cross that out. At most eight means the same thing, one, two, three, four, five, and we can't have any of those because the degree has to be eight, nine, 10, 11, and so on. At least six means this, six, seven, eight, and so on. So we know we can't use six or seven, right? So automatically I can cross that out. At least seven means seven, eight, nine, or so on, and I know I cannot use seven, so I can cross that out. So it leaves us with this. Okay, so that was number four. All right, let's get to number five. So number five, it says this, based on the degree of the polynomial of fx given below, so this right here, what is the maximum number of turning points the graph of this function can have? Well, notice it's in descending order, so right away you can see that the degree is 9, right? So we'll say since the degree, since the degree of, of h of x, uh, this says f of x, let me change it to f here, sorry, f of x, f of x, since the degree of f of x is 9, the maximum number of turning points turning points um, is always one less than the degree. So nine minus one is eight. So the maximum number is eight. Okay. So the maximum number, I'm sorry. Um, yeah. So the maximum of turning points is eight. So this is the degree. You're given the degree and the maximum number is eight. All right. Let's look at part B. Part B. All right, now listen carefully to this. Do not, so, so notice that, that this function here was written in standard form, uh, general form, standard form, okay? But where it was listed in terms in descending order. This is listed as a product of factors. Don't multiply this out. The best way to do that is to think about this. So think about what is the largest, what is the largest term, the largest degree term in, in this, um, 
uh, factor. So you have x to the first, and you have a constant. So the largest is x. And then over here, you're going to multiply that by the largest over here as well. The largest is x again. And over here, the largest degree term is x. So when I multiply this out, I get x times x times x, which is x cubed. Okay, so if you were to multiply all this out, you you the largest the largest term, the largest degree term would be x cubed. You have a bunch of other terms, but this would be the largest. So so the degree, the degree of f of x is three. Okay? So since since the degree of f of x is three, the maximum number of turning points is two. Maximum turning points is two. All right, so let's do another one where it's factored. So let's look at C. All right, now listen carefully, listen carefully to this. So notice that this function is listed as a product of factors. See that? One, two, three. Don't multiply all these factors out. Uh, your chances are you're going to make an error somewhere it's not, and it's not an easy process. It'll, it'll take you some time to do that. The best thing to do is to multiply, multiply each um, largest degree term, largest degree term from each factor, from each factor. So multiply each largest degree term from each factor. So that means this. So if I look at x plus seven, the largest degree term is x. If I look at x squared plus 3, the largest degree term is x squared. If I look at x cubed minus 5x plus 1, the largest degree term is x cubed. So if I were to multiply all this out, if I were to, if I were to actually take the time and multiply all this out, my leading term, my leading term, it, or would be, or is, would be x times x squared is x cubed. x cubed times x cubed is x to the six. Would be x to the six. So the degree of f of x is six. So since the degree of f of x is six, then the maximum number of turning points, turning points is, um, uh, is five, excuse me, is five. And if I asked you, then also the maximum number of x-intercepts would be equal to the degree. Um, x-intercepts is uh, six, okay? All right, so that's how you find the, the leading term. Uh, you gotta find the leading term, which would be the, the, the exponent would be the degree of that polynomial. So you take the highest degree from each factor and you multiply them together. So let's look at another one. Let's suppose in D, I had this, f of x equal uh, 3x uh, to the fourth minus 3x squared plus seven times x squared plus 2x times x minus five. Let's say we had this, all right? Don't make it difficult, fairly easy. So don't multiply all this out. You don't wanna do that. You're gonna make an error somewhere. All you're interested in doing, all you're interested in is just finding, find the leading term. Leading term of f of x. And that leading term of f of x will be the, would tell you what the degree is. So to find the leading term of f of x, you find the, the uh, highest degree term of each factor. So the highest degree term here is the one that x to the fourth, so it's three x to the fourth. The leading term here, the highest degree term here is x squared. And then the uh, highest degree term here is x. And you're multiplying because all these are multiplication. This times this times this. And so now if you multiply this out, you're gonna get the leading term, the leading term of f of x will equal um, x to the fourth times x squared times x will be three, four plus two is five, five plus one is six. You get three x to the sixth. So that means the degree of f of x is six. 
So therefore, the maximum number of turning points is always one less than the degree, so is five. All right, let's do one more just to show you. It's not difficult, right? Fairly simple to find the leading term when it's in factored form. So let's do one more. So let's say we had f of x is equal to um, 6x squared minus 8x to the third power plus 2x times um, 5x squared plus 7x minus 1. Let's say we had that. So again, don't multiply this out. You don't want to do that. You, you, can, you can answer this question quickly just by looking at the highest degree term in each polynomial and multiplying them out. So we're going to go ahead and find the leading term of f of x. So to find the leading term of f of x, I look for the highest degree term of each factor. So notice this is not in descending order, so be careful, don't say it's 2. It's actually this term here, right? So it's a negative 8x cubed. So, so to find the leading term of each, um, um, to find the leading term of f of x, find, or let's go and do this, multiply together the highest degree term of each factor. So the highest degree term of this first factor is negative 8x cubed. And the highest degree term of this factor is a positive 5x cubed, 5x squared. So if you were to actually multiply all this out, the leading term of f of x would actually be negative 8 times 5 is a negative 40, and then x cubed times x squared. When you multiply like bases, you add exponents, so that's x to the fifth. So therefore, the degree of f of x is 5. Since the degree is 5, the maximum number of turning points, maximum number of turning points is four. All right, so that was, that was uh, letter E. Uh, let's see if there's anything else we need to talk about. Okay, so I think we have it. Uh, this is it. So, so that is the relationship between the degree of a polynomial and the maximum number of turning points a polynomial can have and the maximum number of x-intercepts. All right, so that's going to be the end of this lesson.